You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Welcome to episode 87 of the Soul Forge Podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Tom. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Doing all right? Doing okay. Good. I'm glad I'm not outside. Right now, there's giant snowflakes. Yes, yes. We're supposed to get 30 centimeters. Of snow overnight. Yeah. Or a foot for our American listeners. Yeah. A foot of snow. A lot of snow. A lot of snow. Yeah, being a mailman in this kind of weather, not very much fun. It sucks. It does indeed. Yeah. Yes, but we're not here to talk about the weather, are no. we? No. No, we're not. It's not a weather podcast. It could be. But it's not today. Not, it never is. Maybe one day we'll have we, a... We could do a weather episode. Yeah. Today is not that day. No. No, it's not. No, we were having a conversation about what we were going to talk about before we started recording. <laughs> yeah. And we had a bunch of different ideas. Yeah, back and forth. And then I was just telling you about my day. Yeah. And you told me, what did you tell me? <laughs> get over yourself. What was that? <laughs> get over yourself. You told me to get over myself. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that's going to be our topic discussion today. Yeah. Apparently, headline here, mm-hmm. shocker, the universe does not revolve around me. Nor does it revolve around me, which was hard to swallow. Uh, I would say so. I mean, people don't usually necessarily think that in their head, that the universe revolves around them. But the way that they think about things kind of reflects that theory. It's true. Yeah. Because we only have our own consciousness and our own experience to go by. Your own perspective. And a lot of the time... When I was younger, I used to think, okay, what if everybody else is just a simulation mm-hmm. put here for my own amusement right. or maybe I'm some kind of experiment in yes. an alien's lab rat yep. kind of type thing. Yep. And maybe I woke up this morning with all these memories and this is my first day and mm-hmm. all these people that I have memories of and experiences with, that's just downloaded memories. Maybe none of this is real. It, it is possible that we live in a simulation. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. We only have our own lives to go by. Our own experiences. Our own experiences. And I look at you, and you look real. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're a figment of my imagination <laughs> inside some kind of Maybe. alien control device. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't think so. I don't uh, think so either. There's no way to know. No. And so you have to live your life as if it's real. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of going off topic. No, no. <laughs> No, this is all. This all relates. I guess, yeah. It, it does. So. I'm just trying to be metaphysical a little bit here. Right. Give give you some background information on why I think the universe revolves around okay. me, and how apparently, according to you, it does not. <laughs> right. So I don't think that. You you don't think it revolves around me. No. Even, or me. Or you. No. Or, or any, anybody. Or anybody. Yeah. We just we're all cogs in the wheel of cosmic existence, doing our little chores in our lives and contributing to the whole of society. Yeah, but it doesn't sound cool when you say it like that. No, no. I think it's more than that. Because, and I think I've mentioned this on podcasts before, but uh, philosophers and whatnot say that each of us is the universe yeah. looking at itself and trying to experience itself and no more. Right. So in a way, we are the universe, our own little piece and part. But we don't experience life that way. We don't. We just, we just, ha- no, we don't know what the universe is doing. Right. We just have our own lives, our mm-hmm. own experiences, mm-hmm. whatever we're doing at that time. Yeah. But, but what brought this on, Tracy? <laughs> let's, let's get away from this okay. All right. metaphysical crap. Right. What brought this on? Okay. So yesterday I got a text message from mm-hmm. an old friend. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you a little bit of history. Okay. All right. So 
back in the early days of the Rusted Robot podcast. Mm-hmm. You've, you've listened to the Rusted Robot? I have. You've never been on it? I don't no. think. No. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's been going for just over five years now. Wow. And I started it with she who was my wife. Right. So Bridget and I started the Rusted Robot. Yes. Uh, Bridget worked at the Holiday Inn Express Hotel. Mm-hmm. And she met a co-worker there named Justine. Mm-hmm. And so Justine and Bridget became friends. Mm-hmm. And then uh, one day, Kyle, who was Justine's boyfriend, mm-hmm. came to the hotel. Okay. And they interacted, and Bridget was like, I think you should meet Sean. You guys would get along great. Okay. So lo and behold, eventually that happened. Yeah. And we started hanging out, and we were great friends. Kyle and Sean were friends. Kyle and Sean were friends. Okay. And Kyle even appeared on the Rusted Robot podcast. He would often contribute segments. Oh, he did, okay. He did a whole show with me one time mm-hmm. where we reviewed some kind of movie. Okay. And everything was great. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. Yep. We'd often hang out. Okay. Then Bridget and I split up. Uh-huh. What happened to Kyle? He disappeared. Literally? He, well, not in a puff of smoke <laughs> or anything. Not that I know of. Because <laughs> I did see him around town randomly and occasionally. Okay. And at conventions and whatnot. Okay. But we didn't hang out anymore. The friendship... It just kind of, it evaporated. Okay. And I could never figure out if it was because Justine was on Bridget's side and Mm. because Kyle loved Justine that he wouldn't talk to me because of her. It was just weird. It was weird. It was one of those things that happens sometimes. Yep. Well, yesterday I got a message from Kyle Mm -hmm. after, I don't know how many years it's been since we hung out. Um, Let me see. Uh, Almost at the end of... April of 2015, I moved out of the Bridget house. Okay, so, so since then. Since, yeah, almost four years. But I got a message from Kyle yesterday. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, well, actually, you know what? I can pull up the messages right now. All right. Why not? Okay, because do it. Because I can do that. Yeah. I have the power. And you don't want to, like... I don't want to paraphrase. Right. Yeah. And get something wrong. Hey, podcast fans, Spotify is making it easy for you to stream this podcast and many others like it on your mobile device, desktop app, and smart speaker. Open the app on your mobile device or desktop, click on the browser channel, then click on the podcast section. You'll be able to stay thoroughly entertained during your commute to work, your drive home, and your downtime, thanks to Spotify. So he he just messaged me out of the blue, and the last time we had messaged was... I think the summer of 2017, according to okay. Messenger here on Facebook. Yep. Uh, so he says, so Justine and I just broke up earlier this week, and I just kicked her out today. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so that <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be revealing that on the podcast. It's fine. Okay. It's all good. All right. And uh, so I was like, Kyle. Oh, Kyle. <laughs> it took a minute. Yeah, because okay. I was like, I haven't heard from you in forever. So I was like, oh, yeah? What brought that on? Because what else do you say? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like kind of an awkward, hmm. Like not, hey, how are you? Right. It's been a while. It's right. just, just being and I broke up. Yeah. I'm like, okay. So he said, totally mutual. We kind of just ended up being friends instead of lovers. Okay. I'm that like, happens, yeah. That's exactly what I said. Sometimes that happens. And he responded by saying, yes, but we are being totally civil about everything. And I said, well, that's definitely best. For sure. And he said, yeah, totally. But I had to make her leave. We were trying to be roommates, but it was killing me. Ooh. Which I can understand. Yeah. Yes. Because I've been there, done that. Mm-hmm. It's not fun. No. Uh, and so I said, sounds like the best decision. You're still at the same place as when we were hanging out? And he's like, yep. And I'm like, uh, how's Lilia handling it? And that, that's their daughter. Oh, okay. So he says... Better than I thought. She's a super mature kid for her age. I'm like, how old is she now? And he he said, eight already, if you'd believe it. I'm like, well, that's pure craziness. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know what else to say, right? (laughs) Pure craziness. Pure craziness. And so so then he says, yeah, how have you been? And so I said, "Uh, there's been some ups and downs. To say the least, everything is good right now. Good. I almost said, you should listen to the Soul Forge podcast to find out. (laughs) But I didn't. It would have been funny to do that. Yeah, it would have been good. Speaking of podcasts, here's a promo for another podcast here on the ESO Network. Awesome. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. 
That is by far my favorite because it's also character driven and the stakes are high and there's much more of a mystery and intrigue to it. A game like Wolfenstein, which people are saying are one of the most socially important video games of the past 10 years. Catch our shows on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or on over 30 more podcast outlets, including our friends right here at the ESO Network. Okay, so that was a promo. Mm -hmm. Get back to the texting that we uh, were talking about. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, so I said everything was good, and you're like, that's awesome to hear. If you ever need coffee or tea or anything, let me know. <laughs> He's going to tea your groceries? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I almost said that. I almost asked him. I'm, I'm like, huh. Uh, obviously, that's not what he meant. It's just funny the way he put it. Sorry. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I said, every Sunday at 11 is coffee club at my house. Yeah. Because it is. Yes. Yes. You were there yesterday? I was. It was great. It was coffee club? Mm-hmm. Yes. It was the weirdest coffee club ever. But it was good. It was good. Lots of random people that normally don't show up. It was good coffee. Yeah. Yes. It was awesome. So he said, I might be able to go over every other Sunday. I get Lilia one week and Justin gets her the other. I'm like, well, I'm not far. And that sounds like a good idea. And Mm -hmm. so he said, holy crap, you're close. After I gave him my address. Yep. And I said, yeah, it's been a wild ride since Bridget. And he's like, yeah, I think it will be an adventure now for me too. And I said, it definitely will be. We can talk. Ah, we can share some of your stories. Yeah, for sure. Oh, there's a dog. I bet the microphone picked that up. Probably. Whatever. It's okay. I'm not going to edit that out. It's fine. This this is real life. It is. It is. It's happening outside this room. The dogs. Three of them. Three dogs. Okay, hopefully they're quiet. Yeah, All right. they're just pounding around. It's okay. Yeah. I said, yeah, so we can talk. And he said, yeah, we got lots of catching up to do. I'll bring some scotch one night. Ooh. I'm like, yeah, that's a good idea. You've disappeared on me after Bridget. Because I had to throw that in there. <laughs> right. Because, like, dude, I haven't heard from you in years. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, that was because Justine, if I'm being honest, I disappeared on a lot of my friends in my social life. And uh-huh. I said, well, I figured as much. And he said, yeah, and that's brought on a lot of feelings and whatever. And I'm like, for sure, those freaking girls. And he's like, yeah, but sometimes they're hot. <laughs> Which is true. Which is true. And I said, yeah, that's the trap. And he says, it's not always a bad thing. If you can break the trap, you might end up with a princess. Aw, that's cute. So that was the end of our exchange. Right. And maybe one of these days I'll have him on Soul Forge. Yeah. And we can talk about how mm-hmm. he disappeared on me. Yeah. So that was the conversation we had out of the blue. Mm-hmm. And I was telling you about that. Yes. And I'm like... I don't know if I really want to hang out with him. Yeah, because I said, are you going to text him, like, to come over or whatever? And you said you weren't sure. I wasn't sure. Why wasn't I sure? Because he disappeared on me. Mm -hmm. And then, now that he's broken up with his girlfriend, and he doesn't have that... He's, oh, 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 I remember Sean. Why don't I see if he's doing anything? So how did that make you feel? I didn't like it. You were hurt. Kind of. Yeah. I don't know if hurt's the right word. Uh, I think maybe a little. Maybe... Uh, disturbed? I, I don't know what the... Okay. You know, it's just like, I'm, I'm good enough for you now, but I wasn't good enough for you then. Where were you when I needed you after Bridget? Right. And then you told me to get over myself. Yes. Because it's not all about me. Right. He might have been going through his own things. Absolutely. He might not have been allowed to be friends with Sean. Or just going through his own thing. Having so much going on in his life and it being complicated, he didn't have the energy to deal with other stuff. Not because he doesn't like you or appreciate you. Mm-hmm. It's not about you. Which is hard for me to get over. Me too. Okay. I think a lot of people. I think so. Yeah. Because when when I split up with Bridget, mm-hmm. he was splitting up with Christine or Justine at the same time. Oh. But then they worked it out. Okay. And they got back together. And now right. three or four years later, they yeah. finally called it quits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what we're basically talking about is not taking things personally. Right. And that's not easy. It's definitely not easy. Um, That's, if listeners will recall from two episodes ago, that is one of the things that we uh, talked about. Uh, Tanya had mentioned in... On the the, mental health episode. Yes, in the Don Miguel book, The Fifth Agreement. That's one of the agreements is not to take things personally. Uh, Because you have no idea... What other people are going through. What other people are going through and what their perspective is. So you and I are both sitting here yes. talking, mm-hmm. there's a microphone, whatever else in the room, there's, you know, whatever's happening in our lives, our experience of this is completely different. Yes. Or it could be. We have no idea. Because I can't put myself in your shoes. Right. Yeah. The thoughts and feelings and everything else, it could be so different. 
Because you're sitting on the right side of the couch, and yeah. I'm sitting on the left side of the couch. Yes, and I have to say that you, <laughs> you are cold, and now you have my Wonder Woman blanket. I am wearing your Wonder Woman blanket. <laughs> yes, I am, because it's chilly in your house. Yeah, it, but it's not actually. It, no. I think it's from I've got a chill work. from walking all day. Yeah, I yes. think so. And you don't have a chill. No, but yeah. I... I also have a heating pad. <laughs> yeah, you're yes, you've got a heating pad on. That's true. So yes. Um, anyway, what were we talking about? How we can't experience each other's feelings. Right. Right, and all I remember is being sad when Kyle disappeared on me all those years ago. Mm-hmm. Because I enjoyed him being on the podcast. I enjoyed watching movies and hanging out with him. Mm-hmm. And then it all just disappeared. Right. And that's kind of a major thing for a person Mm -hmm. to have a fallout with a friend. But I think this is also um, important for everyday uh, interactions. You know, like even going to a store and and buying something and the cashiers, maybe he or she is rude or just not pleasant or whatever. And you have to realize not to let that bother you because you have no idea what they're experiencing right now, what. Maybe they have something terrible in their lives. True. You, you have no idea. Maybe they just didn't have enough coffee. I don't know. Yeah. But it's not about you, so not to worry about it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And I know that's true. It's the same thing when you're sending text messages back and forth to people. Mm-hmm. When I get a text message, 95% of the time, I will respond right away. Mm-hmm. Because I don't like to leave people waiting. Right. Also, I'll probably forget if I don't. Right. Right. But a lot of people, like me, like you, for instance, <laughs> not I'm not singling you out. Yes. But there are several people I know who will take, who knows how much time, to respond. Mm-hmm. It, and it's different that way because that's not how I would do things. Right. Like today, I didn't respond to your message right away, but I was outside in the blizzard, so I wasn't taking right. my phone out of the pocket. Yeah. Because I didn't have my glasses and I couldn't have seen your message. Which, anyway. which is in uh, when you did respond, I asked if you were done. Delivering. Uh, delivering mm-hmm. because if you weren't, I was gonna say okay, just message me later. Yeah. So uh, I was like, I completely understand that. Yeah. But uh, on I, my side, it's not necessarily. Sometimes I see a message and then get distracted by something else, or sometimes, right, sometimes I have to think about the answer, yeah. or sometimes I'm in a bad mood and don't want to answer because mm-hmm. it may come out wrong, or there could be could, so many reasons. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or you're away from your phone. You're cleaning the house. Who knows what you're doing? Right. But I, I can't see what's mm-hmm. happening on the other side because yeah. we don't have video text. <laughs> so Not 24 hours, no. No, no. no. <laughs> so I, I think to myself, okay, we were just responding back and forth to each other and now you've disappeared. Yeah. What the heck? What did I say wrong? You know, because then I, I make it about me. Yeah. And I know it's not about me, but there's that part of me mm-hmm. that thinks everything is my fault. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do, mm-hmm. very much so. And it's not. No. 97.8% of the time, it's nothing to do with me. <laughs> it's that. <laughs> right? <laughs> Did you know that uh, 87% of people will believe a statistic if it's got a percentage in it? Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, pretty bad, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> See, but you believe me. I did. Because I put a stat in it, a percentage. Very gullible. Yes. Wow. Sorry. That's okay. That's funny. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's how I've been feeling, mm-hmm. and and overall, you think I should have tea or coffee or scotch with Kyle? Yeah. Why not? Do I have anything to lose? I don't think so. Not really, because he'd already disappeared. Mm-hmm. So. And do you honestly think you know now that we've had this conversation that it's about you? Probably not. Not likely. No. But it's hard to get out of that mindset. Yeah. And what's that book that you're reading now? The Subtle Art of Not Giving Up. F-U-C-K? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think that book would tell you just by the title? Pretty much the same thing. Get yeah. over it. Yeah. Get over yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I've only started. Yeah. But. It is. It's so hard. Like, there are so many interactions. So many. Every interaction with Every other person all the time can lead to misunderstandings or... And it's true. And if, if we're not fully present, mm-hmm. that doesn't help either. Because, say, for example, you're texting two or three people at the same time. Mm-hmm. You, you have a hard time following the conversation. Yeah. And or you're texting and watching a show. Right. I do that a lot. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I'll, I'll be, I want to watch a show, but it's rude not to respond to somebody's text. And right. Really, before texting, you had to call a person. Yeah. So why don't I just turn my phone off sometimes? Because I yes. feel the need to be connected I at know, all times. It's terrible. It's the terrible. fear of missing out. Yeah. FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing, fear of missing out. No. You never heard that before? No. Oh. no. But, yeah, it, it it's it's such a changing point for me, not taking things personally. And I had an experience with my stepson, and I was talking to my therapist about it. And that's what we talked about after. She said, what if this isn't about you? And you're like, what? Yeah. Everything's about I'm me. I'm like, what? This is about the interaction with him and I. It's like, yeah, but his behavior isn't necessarily about you. And it's even harder when it's a child because, I mean, they're with you all the time. Yeah. So you think you know what they're experiencing, what they're going through and stuff, but not necessarily. They have little minds of their own. Their pers- yeah, their, their perception own. could be way different. They're their own person. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. Mind blown. Yeah. Uh So that um, really kind of got me thinking along that path. And not only in that experience, but in other experiences with my other kids and everybody, really. So I just try and think about when I'm not happy with an interaction. Like, it still takes a while to kick in for me to come to realize and think about it. Okay, well, maybe this or that or whatever. So it's... I mean, you can use that multiple times a day. Oh, for sure. Especially, I know, when you deliver mail, you deliver to a lot of businesses. So you actually see people and speak to people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for me and your coworkers and myself, coworkers and family members and strangers on the street, you, know, you just don't know what they're going through. Right, exactly. You don't. Like, mm-hmm. I was near the end of my day today, and this guy, who's, who's always walking around, and mm-hmm. he converses with me and I try not to because I'm listening to podcasts and mm-hmm. he's a weirdo but uh, <laughs> okay. he's, he's like you, you don't like delivering in this and it's blizzarding and I can hardly see anything and I'm like yeah not my first choice <laughs> oh, I'm like okay. really why would you even ask me that yeah you know but he's I, just trying to make conversation I think he, maybe he's lonely I think he's lonely yeah so see he has perspective exactly so mm-hmm. you, it's important to put yourself in the other person's mindset or shoes or perspective and I have a hard time with that yeah it's not even trying to put yourself in their shoes because there's no way you can know what they're going through no just have the awareness to realize that how would you feel Sean if that person said that to you right you know and right that's what I have to remember and I don't automatically think no. like that like it's a, a process it is yeah and I think that's always been my issue yeah is that I don't see it from the other person's perspective I only see it from mine and until somebody actually points it out and says, put yourself Get over in yourself. Your yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yes. Did I shock you when I said that? A, a little bit, actually. <laughs> you you, you kind of did. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it, I feel a little bit insulted. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. But, like, I feel very comfortable with you and like, yes. I can say whatever. And I just really felt that that would hit home, you know? Yeah, it did. a really good it, way of expressing it. It and was. It was perfect. It shocked me out of my, <laughs> my own self. Yeah. Because, uh, yes, we can talk like that because over the years we've built up a, a brother-sister type relationship. Yeah. Which is pretty sweet, actually, because I never yeah. had a sister. And so, I never had a brother. Oh, see, it's perfect. Yeah, it is. So, it's great. So, yeah. So, we can do that. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you think that Kyle might need me and so Maybe. I should be there for him if I can. And even if he doesn't need you... What's wrong with getting together for tea or coffee or scotch or whatever? Right. Just to see what happens. Maybe the friendship will spark up again. Maybe things have changed and it, that won't work. I don't know. Because I really enjoyed hanging out with them. Yeah. If you listen to early episodes of Rusted Robot, mm-hmm. you can tell that. So. Listeners maybe should do that. and Go check that out so they get a better perspective they of what should, you're talking about. They should definitely listen to mm-hmm. the episode. I don't have the number in front of me, but we reviewed the film I Come in Peace together okay so yeah there that, you go that was a good interaction episode mm-hmm. i think it's around like 52 or something it might actually be 52 i don't Ooh, know imagine that would be something you have a pretty good memory yeah and i listened to it not too long ago actually because i were was were you missing kyle no no <laughs> but there's another podcast that i listen to mm-hmm. and sometimes they have guest hosts mm-hmm. and so 
I was going to use that episode as a fill-in, but oh. I never did. So, okay. Yeah. So it might be gotcha. 52 or around there anyway. Yeah. So that's that's the Kyle episode, and he was on other ones, uh, like little bits here and there. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Overall. Yeah, I'd do it. Yeah. Ask him to meet, uh, come over, go out, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Hang out sometime, watch I a movie. I think so. Invite him for Sunday morning coffee club. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'd like to meet him. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. We always got along pretty well, so. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say that I'm talking about this, like I'm really know what I'm talking about. This is all very new to me, too. Is that right? Yeah. So I can tell you to get over yourself, but probably a few times a day, I should tell myself that. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that everybody needs to do from time to time. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. All right. So do we have any other things we need to say or talk about? I don't think so. Not for, not for right now. Not for today. All right. Well, I think this was a pretty good discussion. I think so. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Email us. Soulforgepodcast you... at gmail.com. Right. Do you have issues with this? Do you need to get, get over, over yourself? yourself? Listeners, let us know. We yeah. want to know. Please. We you love can, to hear from yeah. listeners. Soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Soulforgepod on Twitter. Uh, make a comment on the episode link on mm-hmm. the Facebook page. We, and if you haven't joined the Facebook page, do it! Join! It would make me feel so much better if you did. Me too. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you feel good? Absolutely. Get this community going. Mm-hmm. Yes. You can also subscribe. Excuse me. Subscribe to your YouTube channel. Yes, just look up my name, Sean Vanderloo. Sean Vanderloo. Yeah. I now have 31 subscribers. Woot, woot. Up from the 26 when we recorded that uh, little video. That's awesome. Yes. Cool. So, need more, though. Yeah. I figured it out, actually. Okay. Because I don't like it being under my name. Sean Vanderloo. But I need 100 subscribers before I can change it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to change the name of the channel to Rusted Soul. Ooh. Probably. That's a good idea. Unless somebody steals it now, because whatever, but... Yeah. Cool. Give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. And until next time, listeners, remember, accept the fact that some people didn't intend to let you down. Their best is just less than you expected. This has been another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Find us on Twitter at Soul Forge Pod, or email the show via soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Soul Forge is a production of Sean Vanderloo and Friends. You can find Sean on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vaderloo. Remember to visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links and share the show with everyone you know. Thanks for stopping by the Forge. We'll keep the fires lit until your next visit. We are the universe trying to understand itself. The miracle of consciousness. Incredibly improbable, yet absolutely inevitable, given the laws of nature, enough space, and enough time. Just think of the forces needed to shape the vast country inside you. The vast country inside your mind is the legacy. The legacy of every interaction of every ancestor, all the way up your line, shaped by every circumstance in history to be exactly what it is, to serve its place in the grander scheme, and help each and every one of us survive. Riding the wave of the eternal now, on and on down the river of time, through an endless succession of survivors going all the way back to the origin of life, trying in infinite diversity, in infinite combinations, endlessly branching, diverging, combining, trying every possible solution, doing only what works. And now we have discovered this process for ourselves, testing our ideas against the universe, conforming them into its will. We go on collecting knowledge, as we strive for understanding and survive into the future, letting it mold the generations until we can reach our mother, the stars. For we are all made of star stuff, exploded out across the eons and endlessly recycled right back to the beginning of time. What magic could be required to make this any grander? And it's okay if we do not yet understand it. That's okay. It's what we're here for and we're doing the best we can. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.